Thanks a lot for joining this uh, talk. You just want to dig into what a month of development looks like for the IPFS team within Protocol Labs' engineering research group. Uh, so thanks for letting me have the chance to talk, and hopefully this gives a little bit of insight into what we've been up to and maybe how you can get involved or at least what to expect from us. So uh, a little about me. I'm Steve Lepke. Go by Big Lep on, uh, on GitHub. Some people have asked. That is a nickname acquired in high school. I had a 10-inch like, growth spurt near the end of high school. I was a late bloomer. And uh, so it has stuck. So that, that's where that comes from. Uh, on the team, I'm on kind of the group that's less focused on uh, Filecoin. This is projects like IPFS, LibP2P, and IPLD. I get to be an engineering manager on that team. And so a lot of that is just being a, you know, an encourager and wingman to the amazing people we have and empowering our engineers to do as much and as awesome software development as they can. Uh, quick fun fact, I was going to talk with some people about this at dinner the other day. Um, best purchase of the year was a tandem bike. Uh, I was able to th get my two, two kids on that, so they love biking with me now, which is great, and uh, that's a preferred way to get to school. So uh, I'll, that's what I'll say there is a little thing. I uh, live in Seattle, but was born in Canada, my view of the promised land, and so when the Olympics are on, we uh, bleed maple leaves. So. <laughs> Uh, anyway, as, as to this talk, I um, really just want to give visibility into what the team is up to, as I said, and how we function. You know, if you go through the IPFS, or sorry, I should say, yeah, IPFS GitHub uh, archives, there's like great docs in the past of like how the team operates, the working groups, etc. cetera. Um, we're trying to get back to some of that. Um, so this talk is, uh, you know, a step in that direction and partly just using as a forcing function for myself and the rest of the team to document a bunch of things that just hadn't been documented. So thanks for letting me do that. Um, in terms of the team itself, um, on the Go and Kubo side, you've probably seen a lot of those folks. They're, they're here and have been presenting. Adin, Gus, uh, Antonio, and Dropo. Uh, you know, Lytle wears many hats, uh, certainly on the Go side, but also helping steward a lot of our uh, you know, GUI tools, um, but getting some of that passed off to Russell and uh, Henrique Hectius also helps with that. And of course, there's Alex Akingbrain, who uh, carries a lot on the JavaScript end. Um, currently. So that, that's, that's the team of wonderful folks. Uh, in terms of what we do, uh, we, we spend a lot of our time attempting to empower in, uh, others to develop their own IPFS implementations and applications. And certainly then as part of that, we maintain our own implementations like Kubo and JS IPFS so that the advice that we're giving or our judgments in design decisions can really be grounded and then also tested out. So that's, that's not going to change. That's, that's important. Um, some things that uh, d define us, obviously, this group of people, particularly folks like Adine, Lytle, and Alex, are bearers of a lot of historical information. And just in their position, they do a lot of connection making, realizing that some development that's happening over here is really relevant over here. And so they do a lot of information routing and getting the right people into the room. And we're glad to play that role and do see a lot of uh, impact from that. One thing I do want to emphasize is that we're not the uh, exclusive IPFS decision makers. We're not the gatekeepers here. We feel fortunate to be at the table, um, but this is a this is a community. It's a collective, and um, you know we get to be a part in it, but we're not exclusive to it. Some of our values, and these are definitely still in progress and actualizing them. Uh, you know what Lytle talked about earlier in terms of being specs first. Like we're throwing all of our weight uh, behind that, and we hope that the rest of the community will as well. Um, you know, we do get asked a lot of questions in different places working on this, but really trying to respond more with URLs than more text blobs uh, so that things can scale and be more reusable. This one is, is a challenge. We're working on limiting our work in progress. We do get pulled in a lot of different directions and uh, trying to emphasize getting things done, done, done. Certainly defaulting to uh, working in public as much as we can. And there's an aspect of just preventing future curses, making sure that what we do today, our future selves or future employees or team members aren't going to be uh, yeah, cursing us for the decisions we made. So getting things simpler, leaving things well documented. There's probably more here, but these are the ones I kind of see in our, in our general weeks. Uh, I'll dig into this a little bit more, but this is kind of what the team's monthly rhythm looks like. So the items on the top kind of happen weekly, uh, items in the second row kind of happen bi-weekly, and then there's some monthly stuff as well. Um, so specifically what those things are, we've got various levels of syncing that happens across the team. So the, the stewards team of, of IPFS, the PDP, and IPLD, we do uh, gather synchronously once a week. Some of that's just dealing with some logistics, but it's also our chance to talk about things that are affecting the whole stack. Uh, the Kubo team specifically does do stand-ups twice a week. 
We have, we're fortunate to get to, the IPFS project is fortunate to get to meet with Juan once every two weeks, and that's partly a chance for us to bring things to him, but also, uh, you know, Juan is getting to talk with different folks and be exposed to different people, and that's a chance to get input from him or to get a digest of things he's seeing. Uh, one effort that we're particularly excited about that has been going on the last few months is the implementer sync. Uh, this happens every two weeks. It's intended for a lot of the folks in this audience uh, of anyone who's doing an IPFS implementation where we get to uh, talk about cross-cutting concerns, get questions answered, and, you know, and come together. So you know, certainly uh, the Andros group has been there, but IRO has been there, um, you know, DAG host and Elastic Provider, they've, folks, they've been there. And again, anyone else that's wanting to do an IPFS implementation, we'd, we'd love to have you show up. Again, it's not the place to come get uh, general IPFS help, but if you want to talk about spec things, et cetera, a good place to come. And uh, also, you know, the Outer Core team, which is doing an amazing job engaging with the community collabs, we do get to sync up with them and get a, you know, you know, see if there are key things that we can help work on uh, together. In terms of reporting out, like a lot of the NDRES teams, we do have a weekly uh, sit rep, basically our status report, that's all public. Uh, you know, it's kind of broken down by different work tracks in terms of what happened last week and what's happening next week and some of what's coming. And as part of NGRES, there is a monthly public all hands that people can engage in. Uh, you know, Fridays for us is really kind of like GitHub day in terms of looking at, you know, triaging all the JSIPFS issues and Kubo issues that come in. Uh, you know, Monday through Thursday is primarily worked, we pr sorry, we primarily focus on some of our own uh, you know, initiatives that we think are really important for driving forward. But after triaging, we spend a lot of the rest of the day trying to land uh, community PRs or giving feedback and getting the ball back into folks' court. Uh, getting, others are welcome to, to show up to this if they like, um, but that's usually why you'll probably see responses from folks on, on Friday, because that's when we allocate to really engage. So, you know, it might happen organically throughout the week, but this is like our time box time to make sure we're at least making some progress. I want to call out the ecosystem dashboard tool. I don't know how many folks are aware of it. I believe it was a protocol lab sponsored project some number of years ago. Uh, you know, Andrew Nesbitt's the main maintainer about it, uh, for, for it, but it's a very useful tool for us. It's public for anyone to use. Uh, things that we really like about it is that you've got very hackable URLs to get different views on issues and PRs. And it's got really great metadata for us on, hey, is this issue or, or sorry, pull request coming from one of our key collaborators or not, so that we can at least make sure we're prioritizing our time on folks that are deeply invested in the community. So others, again, feel free to use that tool. Just wanted to pass it on. Uh, in terms of the release process of the group, um, for those who are paying attention, the Kubo 0 0.13 release was a big one. Um, the amount of breaking changes slash new features that came out slash number of libp2p upgrades that we did while the, doing that release was massive and it was just like too much. We kind of hit a breaking point um, and in the team retrospective it was like, okay, that, that's got to stop or we at least need to experiment with something different. Um, so we're we're moving towards, or we're attempting on a, on a five-week release cadence of there's basically four weeks of active development, one week of uh, things sitting in RC before it, uh, before it gets shipped out. Uh, that's, that whole process is documented. Um, we're going to do it at least for a few times before we you know, and then evaluate whether we want to keep forward. But I, I think that will be nice for us in terms of it being predictable for our development team. And also, as part of our release process, we leverage infrastructure providers like um, like protocol labs infrastructure to t uh, try things out in production and it'll make things more predictable from them for them on when this is coming and the, uh, the scope of changes that are involved in that deployment uh, in terms of like variables to the schedule obviously you know our team does spend a lot of time talking with collaborators and we love that that's a you know I think one of the ways that we can really provide impact and that that comes in in ad hoc ways uh, and so there's no no qualms with that but that certainly adds variables to the schedule where things get a little more fun is when there are security events, regardless of where it happens in the stack, whether IPLD or libp2p, we generally have to get involved, um, either sometimes doing the fixing or at least in the disclosing because it does end up impacting folks like IPFS operators that have software in production. Uh, so you know, most recently, this was the GoCar uh, issue then we had to do a 0.13.1 patch for that. And then every once in a while, we get an operational event. You know, the big guy was the outage back in uh, the IPFS.io website outage back in August of last year. And then we did do a public postmortem on this one. And for those who weren't aware, uh, our domain registrar had re received some complaints about the domain. And rather than talking with any of us, just decided to shut down the whole domain. Uh, and it did take us many hours to identify what went on and get it back uh, online. Um, so we, just to, 
want to let folks know we are working on getting a different domain for the IPFS.io website and docs so that even though IPFS.io is tarnished or has a bit of a mark against it because of the gateway and some of the uh, content that can be disclosed on that, we want to at least to, you know, reduce the blast radius so that if that happens again, our IPFS project website and docs can still stay online. So that's in progress. You know, Lytle has been uh, trying to figure out how to make that move forward. You know, I expect by the end of the year we will have that fully done. It's a lot of it just comes down to finding the right domain name. Um, talk, talk to Lytle if you want to know more of the history on that one. Banana! <laughs> for the overall project, for all of IPFS. <laughs> So, um, cool. In terms of where to find us chat-wise, you know, most of the team is in Filecoin Slack, but we have all that bridge to IPFS Matrix and Discord, particularly in terms of the high signal channels for our team. It's the IPFS Implementers channel. Uh, I know some are engaged in the private IPFS Operators uh, channel that has you know, been discussed. And, you know, just in general, really trying to redirect DMs into some more of these public uh, forms to help, help us scale. The... Active work of the team is all on GitHub project board. And we've found like the new beta boards, which aren't so new anymore, like have enough features that we don't need um, custom extensions or to be using other tools. We can keep it all within GitHub. Uh, uh, Piotr from the uh, developer productivity team who will be speaking after me, you know, has even done some nice things for us where we get custom status field. Like the nice thing about the project boards is you can add custom fields and we have things like anytime you move a card around, we record this. The, the date of when that state change occurred, and that allows us to do queries like only show things that were updated in the last week and, and things of that nature. Um, so those have worked well for us. Uh, you know, we do check in on this every Tuesday, Thursday, and part of that goal um, beyond coordinating with the team is to hopefully get an eye in on how can we limit some of our work in progress. Again, still still in progress there. You know, how this is used, all of our conventions is documented on the on our public Notion page. Uh, you know, in terms of our written outputs, again, as much as possible where it makes sense using specs. Where it's, where it's uh, project specific, that goes in GitHub repos, and then in general, team organizing and note taking all happens in the in Notion, and uh, you know, Endres does have a public Notion presence, uh, and that's where a lot of these docs that I've been linking to or giving screenshots from are, are all located. Just you know, to, to close things out, in terms of where to improve uh, for the group, because by no means perfect here, one is just giving visibility on like, hey, what's coming next for the team and what, what things can you expect in Kubo? Because there's a lot that people, that, that people ask. Uh, so just being more public about that and, and publishing it is you know, a, a key element for us. So that'll be happening this quarter. Um, you know, similarly, you know, I don't, we don't use metrics the best for, uh, for our prioritization. You know, we have lots of different metrics on different things. It's a pretty wide surface area from open source engagement to how things are performing in production to adoption, et cetera. And I think we have a good area to grow in terms of bringing that into a unified view. And again, really making sure that's informing in a more um, practical way how we, how we prioritize and what we take on next. Um, and in, in addition, you know, there are great developer advocates, et cetera. We have touch points and connections with them. I just want to, I think we can pull that even tighter to make sure we, we are really enumerating what our top issues and what our responses and plans are for them. Uh, so th those, are, those are some of the things. You know, I've, I know we're probably time crunched here. I'm coming near my time, but I would certainly for myself welcome any feedback. If there's the ways that our team can better work with you or if you have ways that it would be better to engage, please talk with me or others on the team. We'd love to hear it. Um, again, we're really excited to be part of uh, this community and get to play a role in it. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, yeah, we'll get to talk more afterwards. Thanks. Thanks.